CS111, Intro to Computer Science. Uh, as it says there, I am Aaron Bauer. Please call me Aaron or, or A.A. Ron, perhaps. Um, what's pictured here, besides you know my name, is the Australian Bowerbird. Uh, no relation, B-O-W-E-R for this bird. Uh, this course is not about birds, but I like birds, so there will be birds. Uh, interesting thing about this particular bird is that uh, when it makes this bower, this kind of display to attract a mate, it fills it with everything blue that it can find. It finds blue plastic, blue ribbons, anything, strews it all around. Um, and then in the second picture, you can see it constructing the, the non-blue part of the bower. Uh, so that concludes the, the bird portion of, of today's class. There, there will be others, I assure you. A um, couple of things to start off. This, I, I have not uh, taught in a mask before, so if it's at any point hard to hear or understand me, please, uh, please let me know. Um, also, there's now this fancy like wide-angle camera and mic, so I'm trying out recording uh, these lectures. Uh, I will be, be posting those, recording something that seemed pretty nice. Uh, silver lining to, to the online classes. It's really a kind of review uh, any any part that uh, that you needed. So be posting these, these recordings uh, in case they are useful. So uh, a little more about uh, about me. Uh, I'm pretty new to Carleton. This is my third year uh, in the computer science department here. Um, uh, before this, I was in Seattle, Washington, doing my PhD uh, at the University of Washington. So I am uh, interested in, in hiking and, and backpacking, Dungeons and Dragons, games of all kind, uh, history and, and musical theater. Uh, a couple uh, latest obsessions, um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and this uh, board game called Imperial Struggle uh, about the rivalry between Britain and France uh, in the 18th century. All right. So let's start out with some goals for the course. So uh, one goal I hope to convince you that programming is a useful tool for solving all kinds of problems, not just like writing an app uh, or, or a website, but problems in, in science. Uh, you can make art with computing. There's all sorts of, of kind of useful, uh, useful stuff that you can do. And so my goal is that this course kind of equips you uh, with programming as kind of a tool in your toolbox to kind of apply to uh, all sorts of different things. And uh, besides convincing you that it's useful, I, I also hope to give you the skills to actually use this tool uh, in, in this variety of ways. And you know, these skills are not about mastering every aspect of, of computing or, or Python programming, the, the programming language that we'll be using, but the, the key idea is to know, uh, to, to see a problem or, or something you want to do and to recognize, oh, this is a thing that a computer would be good at. And you have some idea of how you might approach using a computer to help solve that problem. Uh, this is going to, to take hard work and persistence. Um, my uh, kind of my first programming experience, which is also in Python, was a, a bit of a, a, an emotional roller coaster. I remember kind of uh, working on the code for the for the final project, and it was sometime in the morning. It was it was broken. It wasn't working. And I sent this email to my parents, being like, "My code isn't working. Everything is terrible. This is a failure. Woe is me." And you know kept working on it and five hours later my parents get an email like no never mind it's it's fine the the, the program works now so there's there's nothing magic or innate that's required to to use computing um in in interesting ways uh and and i am not assuming any sort of experience with programming uh whatsoever for this course 
Um, an important part of, of succeeding is, is going to be asking for help, uh, whether that's, that's help from me, um, uh, the, the computer science lab assistants, which I'll talk more about in a bit, um, uh, our, our prefect Dominic, uh, or especially each other, like you, uh, your fellow students in the course are, are one of your, your greatest resources. So uh, I think now I'll have Dominic say a bit about what uh, he'll be doing as a, a prefect, um, and I think he also has a, a survey that uh, you'll, you'll give to him on your way out of the room today. All right, so as is tradition, uh, I want to talk a bit about the, the syllabus and the structure for the course. Uh, there is, uh, the syllabus is actually just the course webpage. All the course policies are, are listed there. Uh, if you go to the Moodle for our course, you will find the link to the course webpage, um, different parts of the course webpage, uh, this computer science Discord server, um, uh, there as as well. If you arrive at the course webpage, uh, by far the most uh, useful part, at least uh, from my perspective, is this calendar. So this uh, this calendar lays out all the the topics that we'll be covering this term, uh, when uh, assignments and quizzes are are due. If anything changes, the calendar will be updated to reflect that. Uh, the calendar also has my office hours, and so uh, my office is in the third floor of this building, Olin 339, and you can find me there uh, 10 to noon on Mondays and 4.30 to 5.30 uh, on Wednesdays, and then Tuesday evenings, 9, uh, 7.30 to 9, I will be in the large computer lab, again on the third floor of Olin, Olin 310, um, to, uh, uh, to answer questions and, and help out there. So uh, please come, come say hi. Uh, you might notice that my um, uh, office hours are, are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, this is uh, because uh, assignments in this course typically do uh, on Wednesdays, and I find that if I have office hours right after an assignment was, is due, no one comes. So we're doing uh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but uh, I'm always happy to, to meet at other times, so please just send me an email uh, and we can uh, uh, find a time that works. So besides the calendar, some things about the, about the course. Um, uh, there, the, the CS department has uh, a number of uh, folks uh, uh, who, have, who have taken CS classes and who uh, work as lab assistants, and they have specific hours throughout the week where they will be in Olin 310, the, the big lab upstairs, um, uh, where uh, you can uh, go and, and ask uh, for help on, on assignments or, or questions you have. Uh, and basically, most days of the week from 1 p.m. Uh, until 10 p.m., there is someone in Olin 310 uh, who's uh, happy to answer any questions you have. So I, I really encourage you to take advantage of this, of this resource um, as, as we go through. The uh, textbook for this course is a free online textbook, so there's no, there's no hard copy uh, uh, to, to purchase. Uh, the calendar will have assigned readings from the, the textbook. Uh, I think these are most useful uh, if you read them after the class in which they are assigned as a way to kind of review and reinforce uh, the material. And kind of will introduce uh, the ideas here in class and then kind of after it through practice exercises and this, this textbook reading is a great way to, uh, to review them. Uh, we will be uh, using uh, Python as our, as our programming language, um, and uh, the computer science labs, um, all on the, the third floor of Olin, uh, have Python uh, already installed, and they also have something called Visual Studio Code, or VS Code, installed. Um, I'll be demonstrating uh, in Friday's class uh, how, to, to get, how to get this set up and how to, to, to uh, create and, and run a, a Python program. Um, so we'll, we'll be going over that. Uh, and then assignments will be uh, submitted via, via Moodle. 
As far as how the grading will work in this course, uh, there's going to be eight uh, programming labs, like weekly assignments. Um, some will be done individually, some will be done in pairs, uh, and these will, will form the majority of the, the work in the course. Uh, there will also be short online weekly quizzes that will be posted on Fridays and due 9 p.m. Monday. Uh, these quizzes are designed to, to help you practice and kind of check your understanding of the material. Um, some, but not all of the questions, will give immediate feedback as to whether you have the correct answer or not. Uh, they will be untimed and you'll be able to attempt them any number of times. So the idea is you will kind of use these as tools to, to practice uh, kind of until um, you feel comfortable uh, with the material. Uh, and then the last few weeks of the course, uh, you'll get to uh, propose uh, and then uh, uh, create a final project of, of your own design as kind of a, a culmination of, of what we've learned in the course. Uh, questions on, on any of this so far? All right, so the uh, policy for late work in the course is that you will have four late days, four 24-hour extensions to use however you want uh, during the course. Uh, you can use them on the lab assignments or the quizzes, uh, not on the final project since that's due at the end of exams and that cannot be extended. Uh, but you will just send an email to me saying, I would like to use a late day on uh, lab three or whatever it is, and then your deadline will move 24 hours later uh, than, than the official deadline. You can use them kind of one at a time as needed, use multiple on, on a particular uh, assignment, and, and these are kind of give you some flexibility and uh, ways to kind of manage uh, how the, the work for this course fits in with uh, everything else going on. One part that uh, I see is vital to kind of our collective success in this course is to, to have this class be uh, an environment where we all feel included and, and, and um, like we like we belong here. And so I just want to read this statement here um, uh, that please treat your classmates with kindness and respect both in the classroom and out. Uh, classrooms are, are vulnerable environments that Asking questions and, and learning new things requires us to kind of continually uh, show that we don't know everything yet, right? We're, we're learning something new. And it's totally okay not to know everything immediately. Right? That's, that, that's, that's why we're here. Uh, what's not okay is to uh, make someone feel bad because they don't know something yet, because they're here to learn. Um, and this can happen in, in, in subtle ways, and so I ask you to, to Pay careful attention to uh, uh, to how you're how you're contributing to to our our shared environment, um, and our, our individual differences enrich uh, and enhance our understanding of one another and the world around us. Uh, and this class welcomes perspectives of all ethnicities, genders, uh, religions, ages, sexual orientations, disabilities, socioeconomic backgrounds, and nationalities. All right. So uh, a note about collaboration. So uh, when we're, we're working on a, a programming assignment, uh, the rule that I would like you to keep in mind is that you should never be in possession of someone else's code whether it be paper or electronic, before the due date of the assignment. So I encourage you to, to work together to discuss the assignments, uh, but that sort of working together should not take the form of emailing someone your kind of your code for, for whatever assignment we're working on. That is just preventing them from learning the material themselves. Um, Another way to think about this is kind of uh, consulting with your classmates uh, should be in English and not in Python. You should talk about how you're approaching, oh, I used, uh, uh, I approached the, writing this, this code this particular way, uh, as opposed to 
taking a screenshot and, and just sending that as the way of, uh, of working together. Um, the advice, uh, every, every term that I, I ask students uh, at the end, kind of what their advice is for uh, folks who take, uh, take the course next, um, kind of far and away the number one thing is uh, to start the lab assignments early and ask lots of questions. Uh, this is kind of the, the key to, to succeeding in, in the course, and all uh, the lab assignments will have a sort of suggested timeline to kind of help you think about when different parts of the, of the lab should be, should be done by, and I encourage you to try and, try and follow those so that you're getting started on the, on the assignments, because there's going to be times when you get stuck on some part of something, and if you're stuck on something the day that the lab is due, well, you have a lot less time to get help and get unstuck uh, before the deadline compared to if you started uh, earlier and got and got stuck, um, got stuck on like day two of the lab. Then you have lots of time to to ask for help and and get unstuck. All right. Any questions on any of that? I feel like I should mention we may be kind of down here in our subterranean computer science lair, um, but uh, I don't want you to, to take from that that uh, programming means being in a, a sunless, windowless uh, uh, room all day. Uh, in fact, if you come to my office or the, the uh, big lab on the third floor, lots of, uh, uh, of windows, uh, daylight, and, and, and so on. So. Uh, Yes, we we will we will do our our some of our learning in this cave, but but not all of it. All right, so to get us kind of thinking about uh, what it is to um, uh, uh, to kind of tell a machine, a computer, how to do something. Uh, I want to first think about uh, how to kind of write down a set of uh, very specific instructions for uh, a task that um, kind of we do so often that we kind of don't even have to think about it, and that is uh, writing our name. So if I wanted to say kind of write down um, instructions precise enough that uh, something like a, a computer could understand them, I might have to say, okay, first, uh, uh, the, the type of things that we can tell the machine to do is to put the pen down on the paper or lift, put the pen up, lift the pen off the paper, and then Finally, move the pen at a given angle and direction. So uh, if I were to uh, try and write down the instructions for writing the, the first letter of my name, A, uh, I might say, since I'm writing on the board and, and want to uh, make it big, uh, I might say pen down and then move five inches at 45 degrees. So move five inches at 45 degrees. Then I have to give the next instruction, complete the, maybe move five inches, and if this is 45 degrees, um, uh, this might be two, uh, 270 degrees. And then if I want to have this machine draw the cross of the A, I can't 
if I don't lift the pen up and just say move to here, I'm going to draw a line across there. So I might have to retrace my steps and then move across or lift the pen up, reposition it, and move it across. Uh, and so this is the way that we're going to need to think about getting a computer to perform some task. That it has kind of a limited set of things that it a limited set of kind of basic commands that it understands, and we're assembling those into a sequence of steps uh, that a machine can just follow without any need for kind of interpretation uh, or ambiguity. So I'd like you all to uh, give this a try now. Uh, take a few minutes and uh, try and write using these three kinds of, of steps. Write down uh, a uh, a program to uh, have someone uh, write your name. I'm curious to hear uh, observations uh, that you have about uh, challenges of either like writing or executing a program that someone else someone else wrote. Yeah. Uh, we have two things. One was more logistical of whether to use like that or to do like polar like negative degrees mm. instead of uh, just because to make it feel more like symmetrical I guess mm -hmm. um, and then we also run through the challenge of like how to start another letter without just starting it right on top of the like same one before putting it back down mm -hmm. yeah starting starting a next letter is is tricky um, and if if you forgot to put a pen up then there's a line kind of through everything as you go to the next letter um, yeah other other observations yeah so what commands do you recommend using right left next to noun as like to describe where to exactly go mm. with using the pen yeah, and that, we're hearing like suggestions of like different ways that we might uh, specify the sort of direction. Like, I picked this sort of like degrees on a circle, um, but you might have it be more symmetrical and have kind of positive and negative degrees. You might just say like right, left, up, and down. You might say north, south, east, west. There'd be a bunch of different ways to kind of describe a direction. And there's different, like there's no necessarily like better or worse way. You just need to have agreed with whoever is, you know, executing your program what the direction means. Otherwise, you hand someone a program and I've never heard of north, south, east, west. I'm not going to be able to, to run the program. So there's kind of some standard that we need to agree on for how to describe direction in some like language here. Other observations? Yeah. Uh, I saw the call here. We both have an O in our name. He did kind of a square O, and I did more of a diamond. Uh, you know, it's kind of three different letters, multiple mm -hmm. ways. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is something that we'll, uh, we'll definitely see a lot in this course. If there's almost always going to be multiple ways to kind of write. Uh, a computer program to accomplish some task. And I'm going to be kind of often showing you a way that I think is, is helpful or, or easy to think about, but it's almost never the only way uh, to do something. Other thoughts? Yeah. Trying to make non-symmetrical letters, for example, S, without turning that into a 5 is kind of tricky because trying to go from 45 to Somewhere between 135 and 180, with it not being just straight, but being kind of curvy, so it gives it that edge, is a little difficult. Yeah, we're, we're under some real limitations given the set of in, uh, kind of things that this, mach that, that this machine knows how to do, um, and that we'd, we'd want probably some way, there are kind of mathematical ways to describe a curve, and we'd probably I want some some way to specify that. Um, uh, one thing uh, to the point about it being tedious to write down all these different things. 
Like, uh, in, in my name, it starts with AA. And kind of once I've, I've written the steps to do an A, well, I don't really want to just write those same steps again. So maybe I call this whole, like, six-step thing, I call it A. And so then I would say, okay, do an A, and then kind of move six inches over and kind of position back to the bottom, and then do A again. And this is uh, a really powerful uh, kind of technique as we're writing uh, computer code to take some operation that we've already described and give it a name so that we can just kind of do that operation kind of easily over and over. And that if I changed anything about how I wanted the A to be written, it would change how all the A's get written. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll uh, talk about that, that next week in terms of uh, actual computer code. All right. So for our last uh, 10 minutes of today, I wanted to uh, kind of give um, I see kind of the, the big picture of uh, kind of what how we're going to think about a computer um, in this course. And so, one thing that is really helpful when thinking about computers is to realize that they are dumb instruction following machines. Like, they will do only exactly what you tell them, um, even if, like, they don't understand how to do it or it is not a good idea or whatever. They'll just do whatever you tell them to do. And one, one example of this is that uh, if we were, we were having, having dinner together and I wanted, uh, uh, I wanted you to pass me the salt, there's all sorts of ways that I could kind of indicate that this is what I want. Uh, please pass the salt. Uh, the salt, please. Uh, could you pass me that? Uh, the sodium chloride. Um, I could even be, be so moved by my, my desire for salt, I could start singing salt, salt, salt. And you might start to regret having me over for dinner, but you would at least understand what I was trying to, to accomplish. And if I was trying to uh, get, get a robot to pass me the salt, it would be something like uh, extend your right appendage uh, five inches, uh, close your grip with this exact amount of pressure for this amount of distance, retract the arm, uh, rotate it, extend it, release. And I have to give it this like really step-by-step -step instructions that uh, a computer could understand because it has no ability to kind of intuit uh, uh, what I meant. Uh, for example, pass me that. Uh, that there's a lot of kind of information there that uh, it is not specified. Uh, so we're, it will be helpful to think of computers as these instruction following machines uh, and ones that, that really need to be told very specifically what we want them to do. So uh, I also want to sketch out what I'll call a notional machine. Uh, and this is kind of a, uh, a mental image for how the parts of a computer system fit together that are going to be helpful as we start learning how to get computers to do things. So. One uh, central part of it is the CPU, the central processing unit. And this is the part of the computer that does kind of two, uh, two main things. The part that does math, that can add numbers together, subtract them, multiply, divide, uh, uh, etc. And it's the part of the computer that moves data around. So uh, in this picture so far, there's not anywhere to move data to or from. Uh, so let's, let's add that in here. 
Uh, one thing that we need computers to be able to do is to remember things. That uh, you are writing an essay and you type a paragraph and you expect the computer to remember that paragraph to not just you know forget it. That would be extremely annoying. And so computers are going to have something called memory. And we're going to think of memory as a long row of slots, each of which can hold some piece of information. Each of these slots, we're going to be able to put some piece, a number, some text, uh, a picture, whatever it is, and put, uh, uh, put something in these slots. And we're going to be able to move data to and from, like between our CPU and memory. For example, if we want to add two numbers, we might find those two numbers in two different slots of memory, bring them over to our CPU, add them together, and maybe put the result back in some third slot in memory. So that's kind of uh, a drawback of memory is that it only remembers things, only holds information, as long as it has an electric current. Which means that when we shut down the computer or it loses power, the battery runs out, all the things in the slots go away. Because the actual circuits, the, the uh, device that the computer is using for this memory can only hold information as long as it has electricity. So for this reason, we're going to have a part of our machine called persistent storage. And this is where files and programs and, and uh, kind of this, the stuff that we expect to, to find on the computer when we turn it on, it's all living in this persistent storage. Because this is persistent in that it, the information stays around even when it doesn't have electricity. And for our purposes, an important thing that exists inside the uh, persistent storage is, say, a Python program, a file, let's say code.py, that contains in it a sequence of instructions for the computer to perform, just like the, kind of the, the instructions we were writing uh, to, to specify how a name is written. So uh, kind of it would start with some step one, some first operation, and then the second, and then the third. It would just be kind of a sequence of things that it's going to ask the computer uh, to perform. And so when we run a Python program, we're going to take the file in which we've written the instructions from persistent storage, bring it into memory, and then send those steps one at a time to the CPU to actually make things happen. So in terms of kind of things that, that uh, you've, you've seen computers do, uh, what's missing from this picture? Yeah? Graphics or visual? Absolutely, there's nothing, like we saw, I used a computer today to make a, a picture of a, a bird and, and, a, and a website and so on, so yeah, there there's, needs to be something where we can like make, make images, yeah? Um, ways to input commands into uh, What's an example of keyboard and mouse? Mm -hmm. Keyboard and mouse are a way to, to 
put input into the computer. That's how we might uh, type up an essay or, or, or a Python file. What else? Yes? Maybe sound. Definitely. Computers often make sounds. Um, interface to connect all those different things like a Yeah, there's these arrows that I've drawn. There'll be some actual like physical wires that that are connecting all these things. Um, and and uh, that's and that's often something called a, a, a motherboard, a kind of a big thing of wires that all the different pieces plug into that connects them all. Yeah. The battery or electric input. Yeah, there needs to be some. power source that's kind of connected to all these different these different pieces since uh, this all requires uh, electricity um, and kind of the you may also have heard of something called the internet computers uh, are often often involved in that and I would put all of these over here. In a box, I'll call input output. So these are all all the ways that a computer gets input from the outside world or sends stuff to the outside world. And kind of this is the other part of the CPU moving data that I talked about it going back and forth with memory, but it can also you know make stuff show up on the screen, make a sound play, uh, etc. All right. That is all the time we have for today. Uh, I'm super excited to share my passion with computer, uh, uh, computer science with you. Um, and I look forward to uh, seeing you in my office today or in class on Friday. Last thing, there's an introductory survey on Moodle that I'd like you to, to, to fill out by Friday uh, to help me get to know you and, and learn more about what you're looking for in the course. I'll remember to give Dominic uh, the, the prefect uh, survey on your way out, and I'll see you later.